everybody, welcome to my channel. It's Eva from Behind Me and Crafting and today I'm coming to share with you uh, this recreation of vintage uh, company letters. In 1920s, 1930s, there was a company document which had a window included in that letter. And that document we're going to recreate today with the stuff we have and uh, I hope you will enjoy this one. I'm going to first create the window itself and then I will incorporate that window to my uh, vintage paper, vintage document. For creating the window, these windows were mostly very uh, lightweight uh, plastic film or something like parchment paper, baking paper, something very light and transparent. I'm going to be using this uh, acetate back because it's very light and it's transparent and it will help me to create those windows and I'm going to be also using washi tapes. I chose this design because it does have this uh, kind of like international striping. You know, when you are s sending letters overseas, they do have this beautiful stripes, colored stripes. So I'm going to be using that. And what you can also use, if you would like to have there some text or, uh, you know, something interesting, these Tim Holtz washi tapes with the quotes, they can be perfect to use with this project. So um, I may well use both of them. I'm going to start with this washi tape. I do have here my back and as a help, I'm going to be using this graph from my math. If you don't have a uh, Mat with the graph uh, graph design, you can always use a ruler and uh, make a position with your ruler when you will want to place your washi tape on the edge of your of your back of that back and place the first layer following the edge of that back and then Maybe use a ruler or something what will help you to space it for next uh, for next layer of your washi tape. So if you will take ruler and pr place your ruler to the edge of that washi tape and then following the ruler place second layer of your of your washi tape. I think I'm gonna do it this way. And make sure you are following the first one and just place the second one. My back is ending here, that's why I'm cutting, you know, I'm ripping the part of my washi tape at that point. And then again, take your ruler, place it to the edge of that washi tape and follow with the next layer of your washi tape the edge of the ruler so I do have one side of my paperback covered with washi tapes because I do have two sides of that paperback I'm gonna just flip it over and do exactly same on that opposite side so I do have both sides covered with the washi tape now I'm gonna do uh, horizontal vertical lines <laughs> so I'm gonna grab my washi tape and start again from the edge so I'm gonna start from the bottom of my back and follow the edge of that back and then I need some divider which will make the window so something um, not my ruler that will make the window very very small so I need something wider so I do have in my stuff this ruler uh, with all kind of you know triangles and uh, hexagons and stuff like that uh, it's school ruler, ruler if you don't have something like this just cut strip of cardstock wide enough so you can imagine the window you're gonna create and again following your uh, 
your template, how wide your labels should be or, or the windows should be. Just stack your template to the edge of that washi tape and make, if I will find the edge, where is my washi tape? Come on, ah, here, here it is. And follow again the edge on this side. And again, take your template, place it to the edge of your washi tape and follow here. So I flipped my pack on the opposite side and made also the windows, those vertical lines on that opposite side. So now when I will open my bag, like this. I do have so many windows already now. I would like to add there also sewing. So uh, open like this. I'm gonna sew uh, one stitch on each of these sides probably and one stitch on each of these sides to kind of like uh, make a frame with the stitching so i am sewing just with straight stitching and first these short lines and now i'm gonna be sewing these long line long lines all the way through the all back just straight stitching easy easy way and just following the edge of my washi tape here around the window So this way I'm gonna be sewing through to all these edges. So I do have every single window stitched around with this easy stitching. Now I'm gonna flip it over, grab my dirty tool for alcohol inks and I'm gonna be using this alcohol ink. It's from Octopus uh, Octopus Company and it's called Brownie. You can find it on Amazon. Brownie Octopus Company. I think it's Germany Company, if I'm not mistaken. And it's wonderful, wonderful alcohol ink. And <laughs> it's in large bottle, that's why I like it. You can use any alcohol ink. And I'm just gonna ink my windows. I'm gonna add the ink to my tool and just dab 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 to the windows to color them. I'm gonna try to keep the spaces between clear from alcohol ink because there I'm gonna put double sided tape. So just in the window. And each of these windows, I'm going to show you. And each of these windows, I'm going to color, color with the alcohol ink. And I will try to keep the spaces between clear to make sure my double sided tape will stick there or you can first put double sided tape that maybe will be even better I'm gonna be using this one quarter of inch washi tape and place my washi tape on the spaces around the windows so first I'm going to go these short lines all the way if 
following the washi tape underneath and one more right here and now these long lines I'm gonna go just that space between and cover that and again both sides so now I do have framed with my double sided tape all the windows and I can continue with my inking so I'm gonna be continue with this brownie alcohol ink and add it to my windows just with this sponge tool and now I'm not too much you know bothered that I'm gonna be coloring that backing paper from my double-sided tape because that I will take off anyway so I can go from the edges to the edges in those windows so here you can see the basis of my windows now I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut between my double-sided tape to separate these windows so once I do have all these these cut it on these strips I'm gonna cut <coughs> you know around those vertical lines or horizontal lines oh I forgot this side to cut it right behind the double sided tape and now right behind the double sided tape the double sided tape one quarter of inch double sided tape will make beautiful frame for my windows that's why I use it and it also fits into that uh, masking tape or washi tape I used to decorate those windows so with this cutting I do have these windows which I still can cut a little bit more if I will don't like the writing around I can grab my scissors and cut just behind these um, kind of like um, what is it airmail yeah airmail lines if I will want so cut it even smaller to give it the shape I want I do have that, that stitching I should take my reading glasses because I can see that very blurry way so forgive me please if I'm not cutting like nicely <laughs> it's kind of blurry so I can make it even smaller with very fine frame around and I still have that, that double sided tape which I will be using to glue my window on the paper the other way how you can create those windows uh, on these documents are using window stickers I had these in my stuff uh, on my Etsy last year so I'm gonna be using these you can find something like this I do believe on Amazon on um, eBay on Aliexpress just type window frames uh, transparent window frames stickers transparent window frame stickers something like that <laughs> just just try to mix those words and I, I believe it will show you something like this so I'm gonna be using both of these before I will use my stickers I would like to make them a little bit look vintagey because they are kind of like too new for my vintage style for 
making the edges look worn, I'm gonna be using nail file and I'm gonna just uh, sand a little bit that print on the sticker very carefully. I don't wanna get rid of all that print, just the edges. Very carefully sand the edges with the nail file and then on the top I'm gonna apply same alcohol ink like I used here, the brownie from Octopus. For papers, which uh, you can use for making these vintage documents, it can be printer paper, simple printer paper, and then it depends on the size of the documents you, document you want to create. Uh, you can use just normal printer size, which is uh, here in UK and in Europe is A4 size. In USA, it's US letter size. If you would like to create large document, you can uh, find these artist sketch pads which are in A3 size it's larger size and these papers are really perfect for making uh, vintage documents or you can buy uh, kids sketch sketch paper roll or drawing roll, drawing paper roll and then you can just rip off the piece of paper you would like to use because it's really large amount of paper so you can create really huge huge uh, vintage document i do have here piece of that paper from kids drawing paper i do have here sheet from artistic sketch pad that a3 size and i do have here my printed papers two glued together first step what i'm gonna do it's coloring my papers aging my papers. For that I'm gonna be using very strong tea which I do have prepared here and I'm gonna be coloring my papers in this baking tray so I'm gonna place my paper inside. If is it too big I can just fold the part of my paper. It's not big deal. It will make uh, kind of like a vintage look once it's dry and using my tea I'm gonna apply the tea on my paper and I'm gonna let it soak nicely so once you have your tea applied let it soak I'm gonna add my other papers on the top And add a little bit more of the tea to make splatters and drops. And the next one on the top. I'm leaving my papers to soak that, that tea for about one, two minutes. Uh, depends on quality and thickness of the paper. This paper from Artist Sketch Pad, it's thicker than those others. So this one I will probably soak a little bit more. The other papers, they are already colored and they are very fragile. So I'm going to take them off. And in the winter, you can let dry your papers over the radiators. Just don't forget, it can drop down the tea. So make sure that you do have something under your radiators. Like I do have here that tray with the uh, last paper. Through the summer you can place your papers on the sunshine and let them dry on the air. Or let them dry in your oven. I am using our air oven on 120 and I will let them dry in my oven today. Because I will be using my stamps I need to have these papers flat. When you will take them from oven, they are kind of wrinklish and they do have all kinds of <laughs> waves. So I'm going to use my iron and flood them down. The mat which I do have here on my table, this is heating mat, so I know I can use my iron without any risk that I will melt that mat. I do have my papers flattened and dry as much as I could. Uh, this one are those two copy uh, copy printer paper papers glued together. 
This is from the artist's sketch pack, A3 size. And this is from the paper roll uh, of kids drawing paper, which I do like the most. The color it did catch from the tea, it's amazing. The texture is amazing. This reminds me so much all those old forms which I bought through the time. So I'm going to be using this, especially this one. And uh, I will start to create my own vintage document. So first, what I would like to do is fold it that paper long way. The longer sides together. Now I'm going to grab one of my labels. So I'll make this one and... I'm gonna fold that paper also with short sides together. So um, I think it's called portrait folding, I'm not sure. Okay. So now I know I can fold this one this way. To make sure that I will have their space for my window. And I will also have a space for placing closure for my letter. So this is basic folding of my letter. I'm going to open it. And now around it, here will be my window. And around it, I will place my stamps. For stamping, I'm going to be using these gorgeous stamps from some pool. <clears throat> you can find them if you will type to your Google search, creative expressions. expressions. Clear, clear stamp set designed by Sampool. It will show you all kind of stuff Sampool designed. I especially love these. I know they are a long time sold. Hopefully Creative Expressions will uh, release these once again because they are really gorgeous. But all these stamps from Sampool are perfect for creating vintage documents, uh, vintage forms. So I do have here these dates from the past i've got here this one where it's the logo of the firm uh, there are some numbers here here is number and here is part of ledger paper which is perfect and this is called timeless roses i do have here this one here again logo of the firm here we have some coupon, uh, again, some writing, which will be perfect for making uh, vintage documents. This one, number here. So all this can create a beautiful document from maybe a yeah, um, fabric store or fabric warehouse or, you know, um, how you call these <laughs> people who are making clothes? <laughs> you know the name of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to have a look. And this is called Corset de Paris. I do have here these. And I do believe I can use this label stamp. I can use the, maybe some of these uh, numbers. This is more for, for specimen creation. Maybe I will don't use that much these. And this is also more for specimen creations. I can use that postcard maybe. I think I will... Use these three, especially these three. I can combine them with Tim Holtz stamps. But I think for this creation, I will use especially these three stamp sets. For editing some extra larger text, I can also use uh, one of my stencils. I found these stencils on AliExpress. I will try to have a look if I still have the links for these stencils. But I also saw stencils like this on Amazon. Uh, you just need to type down a uh, vintage, uh, vintage stencils, I guess. I will have to have a look. I will have a look if I still have the links for these stencils. So some of these stencils I can also add to that, uh, to that letter or to create the design of my letter. So first I'm going to make a position of my window. I'm going to place my window right here. Make a nice position. Take my pencil and draw around 
my window window piece I will try to not move it and just draw the pattern So I do have here drawn the pattern of my window and now I know uh, I need to cut inside. My window has one quarter of inch frame so I'm gonna cut inside of my drawing about one quarter of inch with about one quarter of inch gap from my drawing. And I'm gonna take my time. I don't wanna rush here. I don't wanna make it ugly or, you know, not evenly cut it. So I'm gonna take my time and cut inside of my drawing about one quarter of inch gap between my drawing and my cutting. I think I'm there. I do have my window cut it about one quarter of inch inside of my drawing. Now I can take off double sided tape backing paper and place my window to my drawing like this. From this opposite side, from this opposite side of my window, I can use exactly the same window like I created. I created lots of them with the same size, so I can place that window right here and cover my spot uh, beautifully. So it will have beautiful decorative window from both sides. If I will want so, because this it's not a replica this is art creation i can add something in that window i can add their uh, flowers i can add their butterflies i can add their even a small sparkle things and make this like shaker window so i do have here this dry flower or the grass and i'm gonna just place it inside I've got here on the edges, I do have that double sided tape, so I can kind of like stick the grass on the right spot and keep it there. And now over it, I can place my second frame. Just make nice position and place it again. Press the edges so everything is sealed. And I do have a window with the flower inside. And now I can start my stamping and decorating process. And once you do have your letters done, I'm gonna show you mine here. I have made this one with the butterfly on the side, which is peeking out through the window. This one. I think this one was first, if I'm not mistaken. No, this one was just I tried to use my stencils a little bit different way. With the uh, dry 
grass inside of, of the window again and here is that first one yeah here is that dry grass and I add there also stickers inside so just play with the stuff you have and then you can decorate it also with the string and maybe with the seal And then just tie the bow and you have locked your letter in. So this is my recreation for today. Little vintage letter with a string closure and with a window. like this i hope you did enjoy this this video this sharing i hope you will pull out your stamps and stuff you have around and create some vintage documents thank you so much for spending your time with me have a wonderful day take care about yourself and i will see you soon bye